Dudes Behind the Foods is brought to you by BetterHelp. Look, man, sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Life gets stressful, and sometimes you just need to vent. And I think mental health is very important. That's why we F with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash foods. That's better help, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Dudes Behind the Foods. Yo, it's the dudes. Behind the food, dudes. Behind the food, yeah, is the news behind the food. That's actually really fucking good. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. What the fuck, you fucking honey baked ham of a man? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I haven't seen you in two months. <laughs> Hold on a second. That was, that was very unnecessary. <laughs> that shit came out of fucking nowhere. I was just, I'm in the holiday spirit. I've never, I've never been called honey baked ham before in my life. Because it's like, it's like sweet no, and salty. It's also pork, you son of a bitch. And it's ham. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, dude. I know, dude. Fucking replacing me with other people. Oh, uh, you know what? I had to. And also... Um, that Robin Couch worked so hard to to put together that clips the best of episode for us, and right out the gate, it got age restricted. I'm talking about not even you know how when we monetize our shit and it either gives us the green light or the yellow light. Yeah, yellow light means you're probably not gonna get as many ads or it's not gonna you know be pushed out because it's like you know has controversial content or whatever. But age restriction, you have to be 18 to log in and watch this video, right? For some reason, like right out the gate, I fucking um, try to, uh, what's the word? Um, like, you know, fight it. Yeah. And they reviewed it and they're like, no, nope, we reviewed it. Still age restricted. Well, what did we do? I have no idea. So now that video gets like, doesn't go out. Of, that shit's at like 20K views. Like no one saw that shit after Robin Couch did all that work. I'll tell you, that's all my videos. So that's what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was? It was this thing. <laughs> no, they love that, dog. <laughs> Holy, I'm, I'm too dry. I'm too dry right now. Ah, damn it. Let me get sweaty. I've finally been able to do this. <laughs> I practiced it. <laughs> well, shit. Welcome back, man. Oh, um, yeah. I have a treat. I have a treat because I was like, first of all, I wanted to wake up for the day. So do you like espresso? I do. So what I like to do at Starbucks now, I get rid of all the fucking sugar, all the creams. And I'm just like, can I just get espresso on ice? And they're like, yeah, sure. I don't know if that's called a thing, but I just asked for it. Better check it out. Here's what I did today for you, my guy, since we haven't got crazy in a while. Dude, I'm so fucking ready to get drunk at 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Let's get it! So I got our coffee. Excuse me, who is this Caucasian man that walked into the studio? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, oh, is that is that white racist if I do this? No, we're allowed. Oh, okay. We can do that. Robin Couch, is this allowed? <laughs> White people can't be victims. <laughs> All right, there we go. Just in case. I just wanted to make sure. So I found this Bailey's almond milk, oh. which is, by the way, dairy free. That bottle is actually really pretty. It's a beautiful bottle. Uh, Bailey's almond milk. It's uh, called Almande. Oh. Almande, and it's gluten free, dairy free almond milk liqueur. Ooh. Do you guys know how to say almond and Thai? I'm Lady Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Almond boy. Almond boy. Um, oh, hot ass boy. So I'm going to pour some of this for, would you like the more iced one or the more melted one? More iced one, please. Okay. Uh, tell me when. Tell me how much liqueur you want in your espresso mix here. Oh, it makes, it's making the glug noise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, we're getting <laughs> crazy. Hey, this is beautiful. Oh, it's going to be so good. Wow. It almost looks as good as a Junbi matcha. <laughs> ah, yes. Tell us about Junbi matcha. Oh, it's going. It's out in Hawaii. Make sure that you guys check it out. It's in the Royal Hawaiian Plaza. Waikiki, baby. Let's go. Best matcha spot on the island. Cheers to you finally getting your business open. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something about that, dude. That's going to take forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, I can't wait. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is going to keep me awake and also sleepy at the same time. I tell you, boy, that espresso hit me immediately. Ooh. I felt my eyes go bing. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh. I think you did something here, man. Oh. Wow. It is really good. Popping, and it's not too sweet? You know what it is? It's just because, like, Starbucks espresso is such trash. It's, like, super bitter. It's bitter, yeah, yeah. It's perfect with this. Yeah, it's kind of nice. 
Ooh. Wow. That's great. Oh. I'm feeling good. Oh, I feel amazing. And guess what else? I brought you food as well. Did this guy over here just say you fucking miss me, guy? Because I, I did miss you. I'll tell you this. It's weird not seeing him for such a long period of time. Because mm -hmm. I feel for the last, like, three or four years, I've seen this guy more than I've seen anybody in my life. <laughs> yes, it's facts. <laughs> it's facts. I mean, well, hey, look. Nowadays, right, everybody's so busy, you really only see the people that you work with, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, blessings that I was able to... You know, do no chaser with Rick so I can see Rick consistently. Um, and because uh, I really don't see anyone else unless like, you know, I'm doing it for a reason. Right. But you, I do the most like fucking work with you nowadays. I know. Whether it's the food show or the podcast now. So I see you consistently. But here's what's fucked up. Right. I, sometimes I'll have shit that I want to text you. And I'm like. No, no, I got to save it. I got to save it for, <laughs> I got to tell him on camera. I got to tell him on the podcast. So I literally have like in my notes, like a fucking tell David this, <laughs> like a list of things. That's so I do the same shit too. Cause we have two podcasts, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, this is a dude's behind the food stuff. Like they'll talk about something I want to talk. I'm like, no, no, we don't, we don't talk about this on this podcast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you don't double up. It's not, it's not fun enough with you. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're not going to give me, you're not going to give me good banter with this. Yeah. Nikki blades. I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you beautiful, beautiful woman. You, you sexy, sexy woman. You golfing ass bitch. <laughs> uh, all right. So have you ever had Wendy's breakfast? I actually never had Wendy's breakfast. And can I say something off camera? Yes. I've never had these Wendy's like seasoned fries. These are fire as fuck. Wendy's breakfast is so slept on and so popping, people don't even know how delicious this shit is. Okay? I've never had it. It's great. So I brought two options for us, one that I've had and one that I have not had, all right? This is their sausage uh, croissant egg. I took the cheese off because I actually wanted to eat some of it. Awesome. And then they also have this, which I've never had. It's like a chicken, honey, biscuit, whatever oh. the fuck. Um, so I'm glad you didn't eat breakfast, David. So, oh, mm-hmm. Just gonna rip this in half here. Oh, all right. That was a very bad rip, but uh, <laughs> this is so unappetizing from this <laughs> angle. <laughs> oh yeah, I made it very disgusting looking. No, you smushed it into the floor. <laughs> all right, here you go. Ah, there you go. I'm glad I get to share this with you because I love Wendy's breakfast. Ooh. And a lot of people just <laughs> don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ooh. And it's on croissant. Eh, my God. A croissant. This right here is so magnificent. Hey, this is actually pretty fire. <laughs> Ooh, is this Wendy? And why is she so magnifique? I thought you said ew, <laughs> but you said ew. No, I said ew. <laughs> French people hate us, don't they? <laughs> Anybody who's French probably hates us. You can make fun of French people, though, because we're making fun of how fancy you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not real French people. Yeah. We are just doing an exaggerated uh, accent because Nothing. they are so beautiful. Their language is so romantic. And they don't believe in the other end. <laughs> and they stink like a poop. <laughs> and. Just kidding. The schmegma on their penises tastes like fromage. Oh, it looks like fromage as well. <laughs> Fake French people from Canada. <laughs> oh. Mm. Shout but, out to my best friend, Simulu. <laughs> mm. Isn't that solid? Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hate it. <laughs> oh, man. That's really fucking good. I, um, I have so many things to discuss with you. Oh, I wanted to ask you this. Mm -hmm. So, I was gone for a bit <clears throat> during Thanksgiving, right? That's when you caught the flu and shit. Mm -hmm. So, I had a wedding. Mm-hmm. And I got to see a lot of people who I haven't seen in a very long time, right? Mm -hmm. Super fucking dope. We all got drunk, had a good time. Mm -hmm. So one of my buddies who I saw, I hadn't seen him in years. When I was in high school, I went through like this weird phase of like trying to kick it with everybody because you just want to be liked by everybody. I got right? it. And, you know, it's like <clears throat> it's one of the only times you're going to be around that many people in such a small space. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get it. So, like, for me, I had, like, this weird identity crisis thing where <laughs> I was kicking it with these people who I grew up with. Where they were not very good people. You know, <laughs> I'm not one of—I'm not, like, a thug or anything, yeah. but then I was just around them. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's these other group of people who are like these like anime watching dweebs who I pretty much related to more and I loved hanging out with them. And they were actually one of my favorite parts of high school because I didn't have to pretend to be somebody else, Mm. right? I could like the shit that I wanted. I could say the things I wanted. I didn't have to act all hard. Uh So I meet this guy. I haven't seen this guy in years. We, 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 we're kicking it off again, right? He was on the hard side or the anime side? The anime side. Okay. The hard side people, half them are in jail. All right. <laughs> well, and the other half are dead. Yeah. So <laughs> these guys, really nice. <coughs> so one day, so he brings up this thing to me where he goes, hey, do you remember this girl? I'm not going to say her name. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, she's super cool, dude. Like in high school. And I told him like in high school, she had a crush on me. Mm. And it just didn't work out because I didn't really feel the same way about her. <laughs> and he goes, she hates you. Oh. I'm like. Why? <laughs> so you, you thought she had a crush on you? No, she did have oh, a crush. Oh, she had a crush on you? Okay, she okay. told me in high school. Okay, continue. And I just didn't, wasn't feeling her. And so, because I had a crush on somebody else and we got together. But, and she was like, she hates you. And I'm like, why? What? <laughs> yeah. I haven't talked to her in over 10 years. What, what, how could she hate me? Yeah. I was like, we, things ended really good. Like, I mean, we haven't talked in years because I moved. Yeah. And then she, you know, I went to college. She went to college, whatever. And she goes, yeah, she hates you. I was like, for fucking what? Yeah. What did I do? And she was like, he goes, I don't fucking know. He goes, she hates you. She says that you're a really bad person. What? And I'm like, but how? And he was like, yeah, well, I kind of told her too. I was like, well, how do you know if he's a bad person if you haven't talked to him in 10 years? Yeah. But I was a little shocked about that. And I want to tell you something like that shit lightweight hurt my feelings a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because whenever she was mentioned, like if somebody mentioned her to me, I always said great things about her. Yeah. And then lo and behold, 10 years, this woman has been fucking slandering my name. You still don't know why? I don't know why. Oh, that would kill me. So I'm like, like, it usually doesn't bother me if somebody doesn't like me, but that's just people who I don't know. Right, right, right. This is somebody I fucking know. You're like, what did I do? Yeah, what the fuck did I do? So I went and I was asking around and I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Hey, what did I do? They're like, she hates you? I'm Mm. like, yeah, I thought, it was like, I remember in high school, we were really, really cool. So what happened? And apparently- The whole thing is like, it has nothing to do with me. It has Mm. everything to do with her. Okay. Like, I think like her life didn't turn out the way that it wanted to. Mm. Right. And she was academia wise, really fucking smart. Mm. Right. She was super outgoing, very fucking funny and goofy. And all these other people were telling me like, when they hang around her, she just talks shit 24 seven. Oh, about everybody. About everybody. Oh, she's mad at life. So that shit made me hella sad, dude. I mean. Like I got legit sad because I'm like. You have nothing, well, not nothing, because I don't. I haven't talked to her in so long, but mm-hmm. I'm like, how does somebody who's like this awesome become fucking that? You know, and that's something that you don't learn until you have lived life a little bit and you get older and you you see that happen in people um, and you, you, you see that bitterness kind of take over people's soul. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of had to, that like looking at things that way helped me deal with negative comments online because sometimes you know I'm I'm quick to reply to people mm-hmm. I'm very like oh you want to talk some shit what, <laughs> uh, what the fuck I fucked your mom right whatever whatever mm-hmm. and then but sometimes when, when you go back and forth with people enough times I had to realize I'm like wow this person's really just angry for no reason so like there will be times I'm like hey man are you okay Bro, I, was, I was like hey man. <laughs> Go fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> go, go fucking die. But also like, you need a hug. Yeah. I got to, you know, put myself in that mindset of like, wow, this probably, this person is really hurt for no reason. Their life probably sucks. And that's why they're upset to see other people doing well. You know, that was the thing that tripped me out. Cause you know, like you said, with the people in comments, like we've only seen, heard about these people in theory. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know a person right. who's that person that yeah. we have to be like, oh, you're fucking miserable. Yeah. Like, holy shit, all you do is sit around and then just hate on everybody else's success. I never met a real person like that. And they fucking exist. Or maybe this, dog. You ever think about this? Maybe she doesn't hate you. Maybe she loves you. But look, maybe your anime friend loves her. And then she was about to be like, you know what? I'm going to confess my love to David. And he's like, oh, shit. I can't let this happen. So David he's like, and R. Kelly are best friends. <laughs> yeah. So he's talking shit to her and telling you that she hates you. That would be fucking saucy as shit, dude. So saucy. 
just like this sauce right here, ghost pepper ranch sauce from Wendy's. Why the fuck would anybody make a ghost pepper sauce? Yo no sé, pero I'm going to try it. <laughs> oh, 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 palabra. <laughs> So you try first and you let me know what that's like. It can't be that crazy because I know. It's a chain. Pero I know. Muchos gringos. Uh, come, 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 go eat at Wendy's. Wow. <laughs> because muchos gringos. Eh, puto lengua. <laughs> <laughs> Mucho puto lengua, you know? Puto lengua. <laughs> Bitch tongue. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like that's not right. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm <laughs> mucho puto lengua. No, no, no. Puto <laughs> lengua. Puto <laughs> <laughs> <Otra> lengua. <laughs> Marico lengua. <laughs> yeah. um, that's really good. Okay. It's like the slightest kick. Yeah, ghost pepper ranch at Wendy's. I had no idea. This is actually really good. I might. Um, oh, that's fire! It's like really good. You know what I found out? Hmm. I'm. <clears throat> <laughs> no, no, here's, here's why that's funny. I don't know if the if David's angle caught that, <laughs> but I saw the exact moment it hit, it hit you, <laughs> and it was like, a, oh, 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 uh, uh oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> oh, there's a little, uh, little kick towards the end. Uh huh. The fuck was I gonna say? It knocked the memory out of my brain. What was I talking about? You said I, um, I, you know, I. Damn it! Ah, uh, I'm sorry for you. You stupid. I didn't do it. Okay, so they also have this chicken and biscuit honey here. Maybe it'll pop into your mind while you eat. Oh, this is what I found out. What? I mean, so I made a joke on my podcast. Uh -huh. right? I was like, oh, do we say Latino or Latinx? Bro, Mexican people ain't fucking with that. Oh, I know. I know. Like, I, I didn't know that there was a thing about that, right? Yeah. Because I didn't know what Latinx was. People kept saying it. I'm like, what is Latinx? Yeah. And it was the whole, you know, the the, the uh, masculine, feminine thing. Right. And like, I guess here in the state, we're taking that out. Mexican people do not fuck with that. Well, you know, right? You would have your, so I feel like it's this, right? It's like you have your Twitter, Twitter, Twitter side where they're like, we're going to say Latinx, right? And then you have Instagram and everybody on Foo's, Foo's Gone Wild <laughs> this is going to be like, the fuck, fuck that Latinx shit, dog. <laughs> that, like, with the, our socks are high and we're fucking Latinos, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, Latinos, Latina, whatever. Pero it's not only Latinx, it's also uh, fi Filipinex as well. Oh, because really? Because it's, it's the same shit. Filipinos, Filipinas. It's the same thought process, right? Because, it, the you know... Um, so if, if y'all don't know, it's like they say Latinx because if you say Latinos, that's a, like a masculine thing, right? And so it's like, so, so as like a blanket covering everybody, Latinx is like the woke term, right? Or the, the super politically correct term. Um, do, you ever, do, you watch, do you watch Dave, Lil Dicky? Yeah. There's one episode where he's talking, he's giving, he's giving like a, a PowerPoint presentation to some record execs. And I forget which fucking um, Hispanic artist he's talking about, but he's like, so they're called Latinx now. I just learned that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you read like, especially like Foods Gone Wild comments, they're like, oh, fuck that Latinx shit. I'm, you know, I'm a Latino, blah, 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 you know. Make sure you answer your el telefonex. So you can't do el telefono anymore, dude. That's an object, David. We're talking about people. El Telephonics. <laughs> That's crazy. I had no idea it was like a thing like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't know that. I just don't know shit, huh? Because it was like one of those things where they were having a conversation. They're like, yeah, fuck that type of shit. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I was, I don't know. Don't get yeah. mad at me. But I think they were, they were talking about me. They're just saying like they hate that Latinx thing. Right. I mean, look, I mean, it's just one of those things, right? Um, where you have to... Take a break, and we'll be right back after this break. Dudes Behind the Foods listeners, this show slash episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you haven't been working on your mental health, well, guess what? BetterHelp. 
BetterHelp is all about that mental health, you idiots. So make sure that you care about yourself, you love yourself, because if you're not, you're being a dum-dum because you are important and everybody loves you. Everybody. And if they don't, they don't know what they're missing out on. Listen, I've been going through therapy and using BetterHelp for a very long time now, which is why they're sponsoring this podcast, because I use it. And the greatest thing about BetterHelp is how accessible they are. Are. I'll tell you this, my friends, as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless search for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash foods. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash foods. Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway, talking about your pubic region, for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped's products are at the top of every wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all the men in your life go from eggnog to nice hog, that means your penis, with this Dece- this December by going to manscaped.com and using code DUDES for 20% off plus free shipping. Don't let your chestnuts roast in the wrong boxers. Get them a pair of Manscaped boxers specially made to keep the area cool and provide holiday comfort all year round. Lastly, top off the stocking with the crown jewel for their family jewels, the Lawnmower 4.0. The Electric Razor's advanced skin safe technology is a life changer and known for reducing nicks and cuts on your Santa sack. Let me tell you, I use it every other day. I get my pubes real nice and trim and I take pictures of it and I don't post it because I want to because I want people to see how good my penis looks, okay? Get 20% off and free shipping with the code dudes at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code dudes manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit it's so much shit that we just wouldn't know because a lot of new things are happening you know what i'm saying and if you're Too not many new things if man. you're not having these conversations with People, or if you're not on Twitter all the time, it's like, how would you know, right? But the thing is, I don't even think people are having conversations with that, like, like with people like this. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's just all online. Yeah, you know, because everybody talks shit online, like super brave. Right, right, right. But you know, it's like I don't, I don't know how real this stuff. Because usually, when you meet people in person, they're hella cool. You know what I mean? Right. Like, well, uh, because it's, you know, you run into somebody in person, and they're not gonna be like, um, "Hey, uh, how are you? My name's Pedro. I'm Latinx." <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. It's like you meet people in person. You just you just connect as people. Oh, dude, I met this. Oh, you just brought up this fucking bad memory. <laughs> fucking. So, have you ever met like people like guys who virtue signal so fucking hard, man? Like not in real life. So there is one person that we met, and this is a fucking funny ass story, mm. only because it is so true. When you see somebody who kind of puts out that they're a really good person in the front, Hmm. they're usually like the biggest piece of shit, right? And that's like my biggest sign. And I've yet to see that not turn out to be true, right? So this guy is so against like, because he says he's from like Hispanic culture and he's like against machismo type of shit, right? So if you say anything that's like in his mind, super male orient machismo, he goes, you need to check your fucking male privilege. He says shit like that to you, right? Like like for example, There was a guy that I'm. Sh- I, this is a fucking true story. I shit you fucking not. I don't know this guy as a personal friend, but I know him through somebody else, okay. right? So we're walking into this coffee shop. Dude walks in front of his girl, a mutual friend of ours, right? At this point, I just know him from a peripheral sense, right? Like I don't really know him like that. All right. He opens his door for the girl. He goes, "My lady," and he goes, "He she he did." She doesn't need you to open the door for her like that. Okay. Like she could do it herself. Like she's she's good. And okay. Th- and then the girl stopped and looked at him and he was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then we all looked at him like, what? And he goes, hey guys, I just want to say like, you know, I'm on this like new tip of like checking our male privilege. Like, Ew! Bro. And if I, if I wish this was like recorded, I had like CCTV because this was like a Key and Peele sketch. Yeah. That girl stopped and went. <laughs> <laughs> like she looked at him like, the fuck? Yeah. Like. And she just kind of, okay. And then she kind of walked off. And he thought that he was like virtue signaling super hard for this, right? Here's the fucking twist. Yeah. 
Turns out this guy got fired from his job for sexually harassing a woman. No. Like a, like a couple months later. I found out a couple months later. So wow. he was like doing that thing where he's like pretending to be like I'm for women just to get close to girls. Mm. And then like at work, he touched like one of the employees super inappropriately because he was like, oh, no, I thought we were like connecting, we're vibing. But he was trying to prey on her from what I've heard right. through other people who actually work at at the same place that yeah. he does, that he does that thing. I call it like the Korean church older brother type of thing <laughs> where they go like, oh, whenever you're hurt or you're down because she broke up with her oh, boyfriend. Oh, I'm here for you. Yes. Yeah, 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 he did yeah, yeah. that type I of mean, shit. I mean, we've all done that. <laughs> at the workplace and just oh, fucking right. touching. Ah, you know yeah, what I mean? Inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that was the craziest shit, that virtue signaling bullshit, dude. Open the fucking door. That's so, ugh. That's like, fucking yuck. That's such a nice thing to do for someone. Just anybody. Yeah. That's the craziest thing. I wish I could have recorded that girl's face because it was so fucking funny. She went. <laughs> Especially with how rare it is. And here's what I kind of learned from speaking to other girls is that like, did you know like a lot of dudes don't do that type of shit anymore? They really? don't open doors anymore. They don't like... I, I hung out with this girl one time um, and I opened up the door for her and she was like, oh my God, no one's ever done that for me before. And, what? I, was like, and I was like, what? And I did a YouTube video about this years ago. But this girl was like fucking flabbergasted, dog, that I opened the door for her. She's like, wow, no one's ever done that for me before. And we were like, and we weren't like fucking kids. We were like, I don't know, 20s, right? She's like, no guy's ever opened the door for me before. I'm like, who are you hanging out with? You know, the super woke guys, apparently, who check their male privilege because... <laughs> I, I would always open the door for girls. I literally, literally at Starbucks, I was walking and I op I saw a woman coming open the door for her. But apparently, that is a rare thing, you know. <laughs> like, I could just picture like I just pictured myself trying to open the door. I was like, oh, I forgot you independent. And I, just, <laughs> yeah. and I pushed her aside. Oh, but look, don't let a bitch not say thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> I won't say anything, but in my head, I'll be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> You're welcome, bitch. But <laughs> what if she was like, check your privilege? <laughs> she just walks yeah, right in. Yeah, that's right. Uh, check your, I didn't need you to do that for me. Uh, check your privilege, motherfucker. And then walks Robin in. Robin Couch, would you be mad if we opened a door for you? <laughs> would you get super angry at us? No, I think it's just a polite thing to do, like you said, for anybody. But I will say... I've only had like a guy hold a door open for me maybe like once or twice like wow. in that type of setting it doesn't yeah it doesn't Oh you really know happen. I would simply open the door for you so I could see you walk in and <laughs> see that ass Yeah and that's okay right <laughs> Like oh it's my cool. god, feminist. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's cool if we open the door for you and then, like, slap your ass one time, right? <laughs> yeah, we can uh, We can get to definitely, like, There's boundaries. consensual sexual harassment zones. Consensual sure. sexual harassment <laughs> sounds lit. And that reminds me, I... <laughs> this podcast is right brought to you by sexual harassment. <laughs> no, I, bro, speaking of in the workplace shit, and that's so funny because consensual sexual harassment is exactly what this was. I almost got fired from California Pizza Kitchen for sexual harassment because, you know, when you're working at anywhere, especially restaurants, I feel like you really get this kind of like, it's a family in there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's super close. So when I was at CPK, bro, we would all like, not only would we be working these all day shifts, but we go out afterwards, we go to parties, we go to clubs together. I, we would all be really cool. Everyone was like single. Everyone was like flirty. Everyone was being stupid, right? So there was one girl I was really cool with. And like, as she was walking out of the door, her shift was over. I like either like, slapped her butt or like squeeze her little like cheek real quick and she was like oh my god and she ran out she went out the door right so a customer saw me do that complained wanted me fired for sexual harassment dog <laughs> because she saw me like squeeze my homegirl's butt cheek as she was walking out and she was like uh i'm gonna this this little asian man needs to be fired for sexual harassment luckily so my manager at the time, um, you know, everyone loved me, of course, right? And he was like, okay, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 I'll take care of it. <laughs> he talked to me. He was like, hey, man, they wanted me to fire you, but I wasn't going to do that shit. <laughs> 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 and so I was like, are you kidding me? Because my homegirl whose booty cheek I squeezed had no issues, right? Um, and, it, and she was off. She was getting off work. I mean, I wasn't, like, 
I understand, yeah, maybe it's not appropriate to squeeze a booty while I'm on the on my shift. I just found it very odd that this person went out of the way to get you fired for watching two people flirt. Karen energy, dog. Yeah, like if it was something where the girl looked uncomfortable or mm -hmm. it didn't look like they were mutually flirting, mm -hmm. it's like, are you fucking shitting on two people just trying to potentially fuck? Bro, and like you said, the bitterness of life when you don't get what you want out of mm. it, dog. She probably had a rusty, dusty, ashy ass pussy that hadn't been touched in a millennium. <laughs> I'm gonna get some CLR for that rusty pussy of yours. <laughs> Do an some WD-40 for that rusty pussy. I have to. <laughs> I have to understand what goes on through somebody's mind when they see two people flirt and then you look at the guy and go, you know what? I got to get this guy fired. It's like, what goes through your fucking head? Bruh. Like, how can you, like, clearly it's flirting. You know what I mean? They're having fun. Yeah. They're enjoying it. And for anyone that thinks maybe <clears throat> she was uncomfortable, let me tell you something. I I used to smack that girl's booty up all the time. Outside of work, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And we smashed multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> no, goddammit, I wanted to, though. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, man. But that was an interesting thing, too. Have you ever seen those uh, sexual harassment videos, like for corporate stuff? Uh, no. So I have the privilege of seeing multiple ones because a lot of my friends work corporate jobs. Oh, shit. And I always ask them to send it to me when they go through training. Really? It's literally... You know how you see like TV shows that make fun of them and how ridiculous they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those aren't exaggerations. Oh, dog, I know that only because um, I follow this YouTuber named Drew Gooden and he reviews those videos. Oh, really? He like talks about them and I and he shows them and it's so funny. They're real. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, th I thought like when The Office or, you know, all these like different sitcoms or TV shows, yeah. they would do that stuff to kind of make fun of it because it's not real like that. It is exactly like yeah, that. Yeah, it's almost like... The real ones are worse. Yes. <laughs> it will be. And it's the worst fucking acting I've ever seen oh, in my life. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Janine. How are you today? Gotta say, that hair looking fly. And then the freeze frame turns around. Hi. My name is Eric. I got to tell you something. Is that appropriate? Yes or no? Dun, 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 dun. And the thing pops up. No. Why is it inappropriate? Because I made a comment about the way that she presented herself. That is not appropriate workplace etiquette. And then they go back. I don't appreciate the way that you talked about my <laughs> And then watch this. Watch this, bro. <laughs> Next year, fucking Studio 71 to all their employees plays a clip of us talking to Robin <laughs> Couch. <laughs> Robin, Robin Couch, that ass, girl, freeze frame. <laughs> Is this appropriate? No. <laughs> I have to interject because um, I I talk to my friends about this show and like I'll bring up like the ass comments and stuff, but I always like lead it with like, but it's cool because like a we'd started we started to build up a repertoire, but <laughs> yeah. also the first time you guys mentioned it, if I had seemed like put off or uncomfortable, I, you guys never would have said anything again. It's oh, because, 100%. Yeah, it's because, like, I'm cool with it, and yeah. we've already, like, built that up. If that was, like, the first thing you ever said to me, too, that would be weird. It's yeah. like, but bad and, like, gross and creepy guys mm. don't understand why this is okay and why they aren't. Right. And that's the biggest difference. Because, it's that like, social cue, right? Mm. Yeah. They don't understand, like, the, the interpersonal relationship shit, right? So they'll see some stuff, like, for example, it's like, have you ever had, like, friends where you'll roast them, right? And then some random person comes and roasts your Ooh. friend. It's like... No, I'm allowed to do that. That's my friend. Now you're just talking shit. And yeah. now we got to slap the shit out of you. And you don't know me, buddy. And then you slap his ass, too. You sexual harass him at the same time. <laughs> and then it freeze frames. <laughs> <laughs> Was that appropriate? He says, defend your homie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's it, the social cues and the understanding and the fucking reading the room, a lot of people just don't know. Reading the room. <laughs> a lot of people just don't know how to do that. I walked through the room. I was like, wow, that's a lot of ass. <laughs> and I and I slapped that ass. I said, wow, that's a lot of ass. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, the Would reason you like some more? Yes. Oh, some more almond, mo almond milk liquor. Please, I would like some more Emma. On Monday? On Monday. This is, this is actually really good. Yeah, I actually like it a lot. And it's not dairy, so I know I'm not going to fucking toot it up later. What a blessing. 
mm-hmm. my guy. Cause uh, let me tell you, like I was gonna tell you, my body is in shambles currently. <laughs> okay, my body is terrible. Boy, right shambles. If it, it is shambled the fuck up because. Okay, so you're familiar with All Dev Digital, ADD. Um, you know, I'm, I, they always hit me up for random shows and shit here and there. And uh, they have this show called Let Me Try, right? I've seen Let Me Try because I'm subscribed. And it'll be like, you know, a couple comedians. They'll bring out a, a peculiar food, maybe a TikTok creation. And they'll be like, yo, try this out. And then the comedians will eat it and then they will react to the food. Your basic try weird food shit show, right? They hit me up. They're like, hey, you want to do an episode of Let Me Try? I was like, sure, I'd love to. And so maybe a few days later, the PA or the or the producer, she's like, hey, um, uh, can we get on a call so we can like run you through the how the show is going to go? I'm like, oh, no, we good. I've seen it. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. cool. Self-explanatory, right? She goes, actually, um, this is um, a branded video uh, and uh, with the Marines and where you're going to be doing an obstacle course. And I was like, What? Y'all bamboozled me into this shit, right? That's an immediate no. I I agreed. I agreed to keep doing it because it was also um, more of a parkour video. And I've always <laughs> wanted to know how I would do in that situation. Oh, let's refer back to the clip. I got bunnies. <laughs> um, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I didn't. I don't have the bunnies that I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> they came to bite you right back in the ass, dude. That shit right there, uh, humble me, dog. Because, well, here's the thing, here's the struggle too. The bunnies was all right, right? But here's what you learn. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this was the first thing I've ever done that really oh, that really checked me. That was like. You old, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> this is not you when you were, like, fucking a teenager, you know? Because some of the shit we were doing... Okay, I'll, I'll put it to you like this, right? It was a lot of, like, if you could imagine, like, American Ninja Warrior type shit where you got to, like, hang on to the thing and, like, hang on to, the like, the little edge of the wall and then, like, hop over this and hop over that. First day, I was fine hanging on to the wall. But I also have very smooth, soft, amazing hands, Okay. <laughs> Not great for gripping on the shit, you know? He has no fingerprints whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I got them burned off when I was a spy. Uh, but but it's not good for hanging on to shit. So I'm like, so the day, by, the, <laughs> it's not good, dog. Good for giving shoulder rubs, not good for hanging on like, to walls. Tim, stop grabbing the bar like you're massaging somebody. <laughs> Just fucking grab it. Yeah, right? I'm grabbing the wall like this, like I'm trying to <laughs> fucking caress titties. And I'm like, why do I keep falling? <laughs> <laughs> Everything you do is ding, sexual harassment. <laughs> is the way that Tim's grabbing that wall appropriate or inappropriate? So by the end of the day, dog, my forearms were like done. Like literally, I'm talking about hitting the signal to change lanes. I was like, oh, it hurt, right? And so the next day, when we had to use those skills that we learned the first day and put them to use, <laughs> and like fucked. we're jumping, I'm trying to like fucking grab onto the bar and grab onto the shit. Oh, I was done, bro. I couldn't, I just couldn't do shit. And um, thank God there were other people there that were worse than me <laughs> because I would have just been like, oh, Tim's fucking up, you know? At that point, I would just pretend as if I'm doing it on purpose to be bad. <laughs> so people just assume that I'm joking around. Just being funny. But in reality, I just couldn't do it. <sighs> it was a struggle, man, because I really thought I would do better at it. Um, but like I said, like, for example, you know, I used to be really good at doing the, like the monkey bars as a kid. Not me. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of weight to carry. Well, that's what I'm saying, too. Is I didn't realize how much actual like core weight I have compared to like the lack of arm muscle that I have. Because mm-hmm. we took Veda to this baby gym one time in Canada and it had like a little thing like that. And I was just going across real quick and I was like, yo, what the fuck? I this is really, really hard. And uh, it just kind of made me realize. Isn't that shit trippy, though? Like, I remember the first time I realized I was, like, really, really fat. We were playing basketball, and I <laughs> I was trying to cross somebody up. And in my mind, I'm still, you know, playing ball all the time. And I'm like, oh, this shit's easy. This motherfucker sucks. Dribbling. I fucking cross. But the ball moved faster than my body. Ah. <laughs> so it just bounced, and it went that way. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm slow. You broke your own legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking crossed my own ankles over. <laughs> that shit was shocking. I'm like, I'm not. 
it's like your mind isn't caught up with how physically fit you are. I know. And it's just this weird fucking feeling of, oh shit, I'm not in shape. I'm fucking fat and I'm a lot older now. Well, part of it too is like, we look great for our age. And so maybe we feel like we can still do shit. Um, Cause let me, we talked about this before, but I got friends, man, that look terrible. My age, that look, look, I sent a picture of one of my boys from high school to Rick the other day. I was like, yo, Look at my boy. Look how old he looks. Rick was like, that's not a filter. <laughs> that's not a fucking old man filter. I'm like, no, dog. No, nah, that's so funny because me and Khalif do the same shit where I'll send him photos and he'll send me photos back. We go, guess that age. Right? And it's kind of fucking crazy. So mm -hmm. even when I went back to my, my hometown, right, and I'm seeing friends or whatever, and this is not a knock on anybody, but <clears throat> like when we say that I feel like we – might look a lot more youthful than we are because of the way that we feel and the way we carry ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And we just kind of make sure that, not make sure, but like when you're kind of in entertainment or you're just kind of, you know, you still have a thirst for life. Yeah. You don't you don't just let everything go. And also you have to because <clears throat> we're on camera. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. And like even for somebody like me, like when I went back, the first thing that everybody kept saying was like, you look like you did in high school. <laughs> right. They're like, you look... Did you age backwards? You're right, right. And it's not that I'm aging backwards. It's just I'm just still taking care of myself in that type of way. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? You haven't given up yet. I haven't <laughs> given up. And that's why I always roast ass. <laughs> hey, don't bring that genius brain toxicity over here, okay, it's buddy? Not, it's not toxicity. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Fellas, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? We've all had those nights where we got too nervous or maybe had too much to drink. Oh, you know what's up, David. So we've all had that whiskey dick, okay? There's nothing worse than not being able to put the stick shift in drive when you need it the most. But have no fear, Rex MD is here. Spreading cheer even when you have a few too many beers. Wow, here, here. Rex MD is FDA approved and the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. They have sponsored this episode to help you always be prepared. Rex MD has has made it simple, easy, and cost-effective to help all the men out there last longer and feel more confident in the bedroom, okay? Take advantage of their best deal they're ever offered and save up to 90% off and only pay $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. Go to rexmd.com slash dudes for this limited time deal, okay? Now check this out, check this out. It's fast, simple, and cheap, and you can access your U.S. licensed RexMD physician anytime you need afterwards. RexMD has already helped over 300,000 guys gain confidence quickly and conveniently, and they're here to help you and your penis. Act now to take advantage of their best deal yet by heading to rexmd.com slash dudes. Our exclusive deal will save up to 90% off where you'll only pay $2 per dosage. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our listeners to get started. That's rexmd.com slash dudes for up to 90% off. Give the gift of pleasure this holiday season with RexMD. Uh, you want to try this other sandwich? Yes. I've never had this before. Oh. This is the, uh, it's like a chicken, biscuit, and some type of um, gravy, butter. I'm not sure. But so far, right? Wendy's breakfast, bro. Kind of popping, right? 100%. I will tell you this, though. I posted this video where. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, brother. Oh, let me get that ghost pepper sauce, actually. Oh, please do. I just dipped it again. I made a mistake. <laughs> <clears throat> It's not that it's really spicy, it just has this weird kick in the back of it. Yeah, the, the kick at the end is the <clears throat> motherfucker. Oh, this looks actually juicy. Mm, this is probably way better fresh. But that's still actually pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. Wendy's breakfast, y'all. If you don't know, get on it. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at all. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. But if you guys are trying to keep your youth, don't give up on yourselves. All right? <laughs> Have a little TLC. You got to still love yourself. And I think um, one of the things that I hate hearing from people is just because I've always seen the opposite otherwise with our friends in our group, mm. such as you, you're a father. Mm -hmm. Bart and Gio, our parents, they go, just wait till you have a kid, David. You're going to look just like me. I'm like, my friends don't look like you when they have kids. <laughs> so what the fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, you never dress good. <laughs> 
All right, you've always looked like shit. Yeah. So it's not don't don't blame your kids. Mm-hmm. Like stop. I hate when people do that though. Right. Go, oh my kids! Like stop blaming your fucking kids. Right. Like look, I understand when you have a kid, life gets crazy. Mm-hmm. Things get super fucking busy. Mm-hmm. We all understand that type mm-hmm. of shit. But because I've seen like good examples in my life who have been able to take that stress, manage it better. And they still kind of find time to like take care of themselves. I want to be that parent too. Mm. Where I don't ever want to look at my kid and say, I can't do the things I want in life because of you. Mm. I hate that shit. Right. It just bothers me because it right. makes me, I don't know, like, what if your kid heard that when they're older? I know. You know I, mean, what I mean, and a lot of them do. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it's little comments like that um, that people don't even realize do really, will really them. wear on somebody, you yeah. know? Um, and I think it's really important to, Prioritize yourself, you know, keep a balance. You know what I'm saying? As difficult as, as, difficult as it is, <coughs> me and Chia, you know, I mean, yeah, granted, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle. Chia's super pregnant right now. She's exhausted, you know, especially with those days I was doing the parkour shit. I was gone all day, two days in a row. I try never to double up two, like, full day shoots because if Chia's with the baby all day, I try to be like, okay, now I'll be with her the next day. Take a break, right? This was two days in a row. She was fucking dead. Um, But we've always been people who are very particular about certain things. Like, I need my fucking haircut. Uh, After two weeks without a haircut, it kills me. She was like, you know, right now, her nails aren't like, um, you know, because she she did she did she had her own salon for so many years. So her cuticles and her nails are like such a thing for her. She's like, babe the way my nails are right now <clears throat> is like how you feel when your fucking sides are shaggy. She's like, it's killing me, you know? And, but so, and we make sure we get our fucking, you know, Chia Haiki changed my face routine, right? Bro, the same. <laughs> I, I shit you not. This is such a weird thing to think about. <laughs> but if Mariel ever like left me, I think I'd be fucked. <laughs> a lot of the better changes in my life that happened is because of her mm. you know what I mean like people feel like oh your skin is so nice that's not me that's her mm-hmm. she, she was the one that told me my face is disgusting mm-hmm. nobody told me that before mm-hmm. but the people that are closest to you can be very honest with you and I didn't know this about my skin and she was like you use lotion I'm like fucking lotion for all those <laughs> <laughs> well that's what we were told when we were younger like you don't right. use lotion like that right. maybe for your elbows or whatever yeah. but having like a face routine was Super, like, you know, this is back in the day where if you did any type of self-care, you were a little bitch, which is so dumb. Well, many YouTube comments told me my face was disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got those comments for a long time, but it was nothing I didn't know already, right? But she was the first person who was like, you should start getting facials. You know what I'm saying? Your shit's congested. And I'm like, oh, is that, oh, like, okay, and cool. You pushed her. You said, what, bitch? Uh, <laughs> I was like, what, what, you, what you think I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> you think well, you think you're dating a gay man? <laughs> nah. <laughs> but she was like, you know, because she's very all about her skin. Even though, even though her skin is naturally fucking flawless. That is amazing. She still does, you know, she gets facials and shit, right? So not for the first time now, I am going to get facials. I have a routine. I'm fucking doing the fucking three to four process steps of do it like taking care of my face at night with the with the um What's the first shit? The primer. Wait, what is the first shit you put on? Toner. Huh? Toner and the fucking lotion and then the night shit and then eyes shit, like everything, right? And it's like so much. But people are in my comments now like, dude, what's the skincare routine? And I'm like, it's a filter. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but it also is like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm actually taking care of my skin now. Um, dude, I'll tell you this, though. Like, when I don't sleep, that's when you can see my fucking age. The bags come out. My face is all fucking bloated and saggy. I put I put on this. <laughs> so I have this uh, private, inst- not private, but this other Instagram page where I don't have uh, any type of uh, pressure to do like funny or jokes and type of shit. And it's like my more creative side. I used to do photography. I was a wedding photographer. I did all this other stuff. So like I did this video where I did like a fall outfit, but then I didn't sleep at all that day. Mm. Like the day, I literally stayed up 24 hours and I could see it in my face. Uh, and I was like, Jesus Christ, you look fucking tired, but I didn't want to reshoot the video. I already shot the fucking video. I mean, you look sexy in it, bro. <sighs> but the face was so just worn out. Everyone was looking at your like super colorful, sexy sweater. And here's what's funny about that post, right? David put up that post and he's like, you know, this is outside of my comfort zone. I like, you know, like uh, I usually don't do like stuff like this, but I, you know, I think the sweater looks good on me now, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, and then he put, I want all the smoke. And nobody left him any smoke. <laughs> <This motherfucker. laughs> 
all the comments were so positive. I'm like, there's too much positivity here. And then the only person that left any type of smoke was Gio. She's like, I'll give you smoke, you bitch. I'm like, whack. <laughs> What kind of trash ass, weak ass smoke is this? Hey, you know why I know this is like a true homie homie? Because he made fun of me. And then also my cousin messaged me, right? And then he put the Charlie Brown fucking the, the thing on my shit. Bro, I cried laughing, dude. He was like, he's like, bro, check yourself. And he just sent me as Charlie Brown. I fucking died laughing. The sweater's dude. yellow. That's why that's yeah, funny. Yeah, it was so fucking yeah, funny. Yeah, I was man. like, I, I was like, nah, how's he gonna say I want all the smoke and no one's gonna talk any shit with his fucking? He was like a slow mo leave the gate leave the house <laughs> I was like I gotta say something <laughs> let me tell you something people who create content and they kind of frame things up and they do it by themselves with a tripod yeah. that shit takes forever <laughs> holy shit that took I was tired after dude cause you shoot and you don't know what you look like right right I'm right like, oh, I fucked this up oh this is fucked I, this shit took like an hour and a half I'm like <laughs> is this what you guys do all day for that weak ass little sweater video <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I shot it in like different locations. It didn't look good. Uh, I'm like, damn. Yeah, man. Like, it's kind of like high key, a little annoying. <sighs> yeah. Effort is effort is annoying. Well, that's the thing too, is like I just to go back to like I understand like some people when they say it's hard, it's like to to kind of care about how you look because that's just another thing you have to worry about. I know. That's like like when you're a comic. You don't have to worry about anything. You just have to be fucking funny. I know. You can be ugly. You if, could be ugly, dress whatever. If anything, it's weird if you're an attractive comedian. Yeah. Like like fucking my boy Matt Rife. That's a sexy boy. It's a sexy ass man. Fucking and, funny too, by the way. And and he's worked that into his shit now, right? Because he knew that in the beginning, people would see him and be like, this fool's a comedian. He's, he's a fucking model. Like, what do you think he is? Like, he's not funny, right? But now, you know, he's found his lane. He, he kind of makes fun of himself. But he also, what I love that he does now, not only does he say like, oh, I know, you probably think I'm like some like fuck boy from Vine or whatever, but he leans into how attractive he is too. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think he was kind of, he wasn't doing before, but now he's like, he the, the, the vibe is very like, yeah, okay, I know I look like a fuck boy, but also like, yeah, like, I'll fuck your bitch type yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? He's good, man. Like, I saw uh, quite a few of his clips um, because uh, Chris Sosa is friends with him. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I was like, damn, this guy's fucking, he's been, I can tell he's been doing it for a while. Because the way that he oh, delivers yeah. his shit and his lines, it's like his his stage presence is fucking on point, man. Oh, it's it's he, it's he part of the reason he he didn't, he hated, he didn't hate, but when he was on Wild and Out, he was like, ugh. Because he takes his stand-up so seriously. And he was like, he's like, ugh, I want to just... He's like, oh, I don't want to, he didn't want to just be on Wild and Out doing like, you know, just fucking like, you know, roasty jokes. You know, yeah, he's like, yeah. oh, he took his, his shit real seriously. But speaking of Chris Sosa, this motherfucker was on the parkour shoot with me yesterday. Oh, for real? And this fool is like a <clears throat> secret action star or some shit. Because <laughs> he took to that shit like, like he was, I don't know, like he came out the womb fucking doing parkour, <laughs> parkour like hanging off the umbilical cord and shit because he was amazing. He's a former amateur boxer too. So yeah, he yeah. has like He has like 60 amateur boxing matches. Dude, I didn't know it was like that. Yeah. They said like, yeah, he boxes, but like he took to this shit so quick and to the point where on day two when I was done and the other girls were fucking up, one girl had rolled her ankle um, doing some shit. <laughs> well, so, was it worth it, bitch? <laughs> was it worth it? So it was like Chris was the only one that was actually pulling off everything, right? And so we made a – oh, so he he was fucking around in between takes and like almost kind of fell. And literally everyone behind the camera was like, yo, fucking chill out. We cannot have you hurting yourself because then the video is just done. <laughs> <laughs> then no one can do shit anymore, like, you know? You're the only one that's actually doing this. Yeah, literally. I was like, ah, oh, goddamn youth, even though he's like only a few years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> that much younger than us. But that, that boy, he's athletic. And he's also, like I've had him on my podcast multiple times. He has such a competitive drive in him. Oh. Like he's hyper competitive. He doesn't like being last at anything. Yes, dog. And thank God I wasn't I was just kind of mediocre at this shit because if I felt like I was doing good, we would have just been going back and forth because he was already competing with himself enough. Like he mm -hmm. would do one, one lap and he'd be like, ah, let me see if I can do it better. Yeah. Ah, let me see if I can do it cleaner. And I'm there like, can we go home? <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting there talking to the fucking mirror. Hey, Toma, come on, fucking let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good dude, man. No, man, like he's he's very, very competitive. That's why his stand-up has gotten really fucking good too. Yeah. Like he's he's finally like leaning into like who his own identity is. Mm. And now he really fucks with himself super fucking hard, man. That's great. You know what I'm saying? When I think that's 
when you can see someone come into their own like that, it's lean awesome. into who they are, really fucking, you know, as cliche as it sounds, find themselves. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah, oh, it's beautiful to yeah, see. Yeah, it's like really nice to see, man. Like, and that's how you don't be a hating ass motherfucker, dude. <laughs> when people do well, you fucking cheer them on. Yes, and you're happy for other people because you are doing shit for yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. A lot of these bitter ass people are people that like either failed or they have nothing going on and they're angry at the world for it instead yeah. of like checking themselves, you know? Yeah, be mad here. Don't be mad at us. Yeah, get a fucking facial on your life, dog. Get rid of those fucking blackheads on your soul, fool. <laughs> yeah, man, the fucking, make sure that you get some vitamin A in your life, <laughs> some vitamin C and some vitamin E, eh? Yeah, and get some vitamin D in your rusty, dusty <laughs> pussy. <laughs> Bro, um, <laughs> the rusty, wo- dusty pussy. The <laughs> woman that does my... Uh, facials, she, you can tell she, no, not even you can tell. I know for a fact that she loves, you know, they all do. All the estheticians do. They are very satisfied when they can squeeze all the shit out of your face, right? They love it, right? And this woman, she goes so hard, it fucking hurts. Like, it really, really hurts. Because I have a, I have big-ass pores and them shits get congested. Same here. And sometimes, you know, I'll break out. So she wants to not only like squeeze, but she'll take the little shit and fucking pierce my little needle and fucking poke the shit out, squeeze the shit out, right? And it's to the point where for me to get through it, I do two things. One, I put my hand in my pocket and every time she goes to squeeze a part of my face, I yank on my pubic hair as hard as I can and I twist it. To distract from the pain. It hurts that bad? Yes, to distract from the pain that my face is going through. Second, second thing I do is I tell myself, and this is not a joke, I tell myself that I'm a prisoner of war and I'm getting tortured for answers. Dog, it's that bad? (laughs) Yes. I just want to go into this place and all I hear is, no, I do this shit to keep from screaming because like she's going in on my face and I'm like, and I'm there, I'm like, don't give the answers to these communists. (laughs) Don't give up the secrets because she's going in. I'm like, and like, you know, just every once in a while, like, dog, she'll be done. And I'm you just fucking, fucking tear just That's going down my so face. so fucking, it's that bad, huh? It's a, it's a lot. Yeah. Damn, I don't think I've ever had extractions that hard. Well, because your skin's pretty, your skin's decent. I mean, the only part that, because I have really large pores on my nose. Yeah. That's the part that hurts the most. It's like when they go into your nose, like that fucking hurts a lot. That's probably the least painful for me. Oh, really? Because here's the thing. I'll get shit on my, like, cheeks. So, like, the squishiest part, she's just fucking, oh. yeah, dog. And the shit when I would get them on my jaw, oh. She's like, how dare you open the door for me? <laughs> I am a strong woman. <laughs> yeah, she has other shit going on in her mind. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You're going to just call me beautiful, huh? <laughs> huh? She's like, open the door for me and and you call me a Latina <laughs> and, and not a Latinx? <laughs> Is this an appropriate way to <laughs> slap my ass? Huh? Uh-huh. Make me feel like I'm sexy, huh? <laughs> well, guys. <laughs> that wraps up this episode of Dudes. Behind the Foods. Bitch. Behind the booth, yeah. Deuce. Well, thank you for watching, and make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that video with a like, just like we want to hit Robin Couch's beautiful butt. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes. Behind the food. Tis the season for clean balls, my friends. Fa la 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 la. Get on that manscape, my friends. I look amazing, specifically down there. When I pull down my pants and show my lady, she's like, wow, super clean. To get 20% off and free shipping with the code dudes at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code dudes. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit.